Fishing DMV has big plans for the future, but to get there, I need your help. To keep Fishing the DMV alive through 2024 and beyond, we need 100 Patreon subscribers. We are only 25 Patreon subscribers away from achieving this first milestone. For $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Cinco's or a Jackhammer Chatterbait, you can keep Fishing the DMV alive and well. All Patreon members will receive 5% off all of their orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle each and every month. You'll be entered in weekly prize giveaways, membership to our private Facebook group community, and you'll also have access to private live streams, videos, and so much more. If you think you can help Fishing DMV continue on into the future, please check out the link below or click the link above my head. Thank you so much. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. A moment of do. Here we go. I'm here. Sir, just, hey. yeah, I mean, honestly, tell, tell the crowd at home, like, what, who you are, uh, how did we meet up, and what we've got going on today. Well, my name is David Smith. I'm the owner of Smitty's Tackle Box, and um, I do a lot of the shows in Virginia and Maryland. Um, I got a small tackle company. And uh, you and I met basically through New Horizon Bass Anglers. I've Charlie Taylor. Member, Charlie Taylor. i um, uh, been a member of that club for 30 years now. The club's been in existence for 32 years. Um, so we're coming up. We're going to start 33, coming up in March. Mm. And uh, the club's been around for a while. So That's freaking uh, awesome. You, you experienced one of our kids' derbies way back in the day. And you've told your story. You know, if people see the Charlie Taylor interview um you know you talk about that, that. man so. is and i know and that's mm. like i and, and charlie i know you're probably listening right now and i know i'm not trying to dethrone uh david but you sir need your own tv show because the stories you guys could t you guys do like just sit you guys at a bar and just talk about stories people yeah. would love yeah. that i mean yeah it's no, insane yeah, it's, it's it's amazing all uh, the years and I, I i met charlie when i was about 15 years old um my father fished with him in a previous club and uh, we fished out of Pohick and it was like 30 degrees out and his boat wouldn't start. He wrote, he had a Cajun boat and uh, my dad had just purchased a new boat from a club member and uh, his boat wouldn't start. So the two of them were, you know, we finally got our boat going and we made a run and didn't catch anything all day. And we came back and Charlie's boat never worked, but he just fished around Pohick and uh, caught a limit and won the tournament. That's freaking awesome. That's my first memory of you know charlie taylor so that was a long time ago this is something this topic that we're about to get into and then guys mm -hmm. of course if you have any questions for dave uh please let me know in the comment section down below the other thing is let me know about the audio um i am able to now record the audio separately so here's the boogie if the audio is not perfect do not worry about it this will be re-uploaded in a couple of weeks and the audio will be polished up but what i'm going to do is uh and then oh we have a great question by usa kayak fishing uh where would you find the vendor map uh go to richmond fishing expo uh right there scroll down there's the map there as well if you come into the building you also see it as well so what we're going to do is i'm going to turn my camera away because no one wants to see my face and we're going to go with dual cameras here because i want you guys all to see what we have set up here so without further ado so what are we dealing with here well um i started my business about 15 years ago when i was i started with tubes and a lot of people you know the vendors know me from uh tubes and um along along the way uh, i realized that certain shows um for example the uh dale city show which is coming up crankbait sold very well mm -hmm. um plastics really didn't sell that well um the fredericksburg flea market coming up you get a good mix of everything um at that show but i started to realize certain shows had you know certain things that sold very well um so i kind of started with tubes and then i was representing some small companies um that did custom work and then um i started picking up some prank baits here and there and, and selling some you know, use crankbaits and then it morphed into what it is today. And now I basically, I uh, stick to the 1970s, 1980s. Um, but I'm looking for, or I find for people crankbaits that were made and then discontinued or modified and changed. Um, 
you know, over time for whatever reason. Um, and so I brought some examples of some of those baits that are, you know, pretty popular um, and what I sell at the flea markets and shows. So for, for people that aren't aware, uh, maybe you don't know about like this, the underbelly black market of, of old style crankbaits. Um, I, I guess to kind of give people just a, a quick overview of why this is so cool is I guess like the old like bombers, the Bagleys, um, there are certain crankbaits that people will pay upwards of like what, over a hundred dollars for oh, yeah. online? Oh yeah, definitely. Why, definitely. why would they want to do that? Um, because when they modify the baits, they don't run the same way. They change um, specific things about the baits, and then they don't they don't run the same way. And I'll start over here with the uh, the man's baby one minus. And um, if you talk to Steve Chaconis, we'll tell you. You know, he uh, he actually did a video about the changes that they made. Um, so you started back in the day with the baby one minus, and people talked about the double stamp. And it has baby one on one side and my hands on the other. Mm. And you shake them and it has a certain sound. Um, they, you know, and they, the originals had a straight, get the camera here, um, had a, a, a orange, well, this one would have an orange line. That would be the oldest bait. Mm. And then they modified it and they changed it and they made a new mold and it doesn't have the baby one but it still has the same rattle in it. So here's one that doesn't have, have it, but they sound the same. Then they took production overseas. And oh, okay. so if they changed the rattles mm. and you can hear, I don't and know. If you guys really want to hear the rattle, he can just put it up to the mic. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah so good. there's a the big change in sound. Now, does that make a huge difference? To some people it does. Then they changed the body size and then they changed the lip. So um, when the body size was bigger, it doesn't dive as deep. It floats higher and they changed the lip. It doesn't run the same. So now you've made modifications. Do they still catch fish? Yes. But a lot of people, and I see it all the time at shows when I have a single stamp bait out, people will pick it up and they'll listen to it first thing. And the ones that want the old baits, will listen. If it's an old one, they'll buy it. If they don't want it, they put it back. Hmm. And I contacted Mans and I said, hey, you know, can you go back to the original design with the original rattles? And I got somebody in sales and marketing and they said, oh, no, our baits sell just fine. And I'm like, I could sell a thousand of these before I sell a hundred of the new baits. I said, because people in the mid-Atlantic region understand the differences between the older baits and the newer baits. Is it that the, so I saw this a lot. I'm really big on collecting lipless baits specifically. Mm -hmm. um, getting like, so example is Strike King used to make a silent lipless bait. They don't make that anymore. That one was really good in certain situations. And then you got the one knockers. And mm -hmm. I think my example with this, and I could be wrong, is like a one knocker has that deep pulse. I, is that what the old baits had? Was that deeper noise comparatively? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. I mean, with, especially with this, you can tell there's like two or three rattles or BBs in there that are larger and they make, you know, and with the newer ones, there's multiple smaller ones that make a higher pitch noise. Hmm. So you got a lower pitch and you have a higher pitch, you know, um, does it make a difference to the fish? It may or may not. Um, but it makes difference to the, the guys that throw them and know, you know, those older baits. How many are out there? I mean, like pick, pick a model that you like, let's go with the man since you had that up, mm -hmm. like uh, of the perfect model man's. Um, how many were made in production, generically speaking? Is there a lot out there in the market you can find? Well, they, there are, but they've gotten more and more expensive. Um, mm -hmm. I usually at a show, you know, at the beginning of a show, I can walk around and kind of pick them up here and there. Um, I used to be able to. Now it's very difficult. I have a more difficult time finding them. And I used to do a show up in Maryland and I would get a bunch and then I'd bring them down to Fredericksburg. I, I'm, I'll sell out. Whatever I bring to Fredericksburg, I'll sell out before the show opens. I got guys that will come to see me and That's will purchase every double stamp, single stamp, old single stamp, and I can sell them out before the show opens. That's freaking cool. Yeah. All right. Pull something else yeah. up. Let's, let's get something right. else going. On. And uh, guys, if there's something yes. particular you want here to see, just let us know here. Yeah. I'm going to do a quick panning shot. So when you get into the same type of thing, and I'll hand you one, and uh, hand you one. Here is an, a screw tail bomber 6A, uh, just classic 
classic bait on the Potomac River right here. 6A and Fire Tiger. 1980s, this was the bait. Um, go back and watch some of the uh, old Bassmaster shows um, on the Potomac River, and they'll talk about the Bomber 6A Fire Tiger. Um, and that is a non-screw tail versus a screw tail. And I'll hold these up to the camera here if I can. There you go. And perfect. if you look at the tails, the screw is in, and you can actually see the screw in that. Hold it up to that one. You just hold it up a little higher. Yeah. yeah. That Sorry. one's got the, uh, no, you're fine. Perfect. Actually has an actual screw in it. That's good to know. Got to turn that this on. one does it. Yeah, I just got to turn the auto thing on. It's fine. People can see it. So when you go and shake these, you can tell the difference and uh, the difference between them, the higher rattle and the, you know, the difference between them. Also, the plastic is different and the paint doesn't stay on these baits. The new baits, the paint chips off much quicker Why? than the old ones, whatever process that they use to paint them. Hmm. So um, plus they're no longer made in the U.S. So whatever they're making, you know, overseas, a lot of times when uh, baits go from the U.S. or went from the U.S. to overseas, there's a big jump in price uh, for them. People want the USA made baits. So, I love that. So, uh, that that one right there. What's that color? This one the, or the black? Oh, one? the red uh, one. The red one. Oh, the wiggle wart. Um, yeah, wiggle warts. Um, they're they're you know they 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 jumped in price once uh, Rapala uh, made the change to them. And the pre-wrap versus the post-wrap, um, bait, the baits. Um, here's a uh, wiggle wart. This is a Rapala made. Um, this is a pre. Uh, so this was when it was storm. And the difference is on the belly or underneath the lip, you have, it says storm on it. And it says original series, which means it's not the original. And <laughs> the uh, regular or the older wiggle wart has wheel wart underneath. And the big change they made from what I understand was they corrected the problems with the bait. The problem that Rapala found was the lips weren't perfect. So they made a change when they were making them. Now, these still catch fish. You can still catch fish on them. But when you get to one like this, and I'm going to hand these to you, feel the lips and oh, wow. tell me the difference between the two. Dang. Uh, this one feels super thin, like mm -hmm. paper thin. This one feels very thick. Yeah. That's interesting. They're both originals. They're both originals. It's just the on that one, you feel that ridge on the top, which when you're cranking it, it's going to make it dart and hunt versus one that's just going to run regularly. So they're both they're both the same um, year and model, but the red one is a thinner bill. You feel the ridge on that bill. That's going to make it hot. That's going to make it change and dart underwater, which is what you're looking for. So that's what the wiggle wart was known for. Um, having that that little ridge or <clears throat> having that lip not be perfectly fused together when they put the two pieces together. So that's um, that's why people are looking for those. And the prices shot up. People were looking for them. Um, and they've come down a little bit. But the collectors, they're, they're a collector group for the different colors, that type of thing. But for the guys that fish them, they're going to sit there and look at them. They're going to look for the ones that have that miss. That's freaking cool. Lip. Ah. So, we, so we do got a couple of questions here. Sure. Uh, let's pull this one up here. We got from TDC Havoc. What does the single stamp mean? I think you covered that, but we can also illustrate. So we got we got over 40 oh. people watching right now. Yeah. Oh, with the, the baby one minus. Yeah. Okay. So on baby one, the older ones, they will have on one side, it says baby one and the other side, it says manse. So that's two, basically two stamps. When you go to the single stamp, basically it says man's on the one side but there is nothing on that's the other side so this would be a single stamp and the only way you can tell the difference between the older ones the original usa made ones and the ones that are made overseas um is the sound and one has uh like three rattles in it or three bb's in it and the other one has like five or six 
So that's the uh, the difference between the two. Yeah, and guys, keep your questions coming here today. Uh, we got we got let's see, we got 15 people watching on Instagram. We got 38 watching on YouTube and Facebook on a Friday morning. Why are you guys not working? Come on. We got Rebecca. Rebecca says, I. I again thank all of you for your support back in in the day when I started high school inner interscholastic I have my wife here who does speak English interscholastic bass tournament fishing in 1997 that is why I keep a sign language interpreter she also knows English way better than I do uh, we got Percival ponies snow day yeah it's absolutely crazy out like with all the snow is Rebecca is that Rebecca Gore is that Becky? Yes, it is. It's That's Rebecca Becky Gore. Gore. Hey, Becky Gore, how are you doing? Becky, where have you been at? I saw you. Uh, you she ran the Orange County. Yes. I, the Orange County show. Becky, Orange County program. So, Becky. <laughs> so, Becky, I ran into you last show, and I remember this interaction because I talked to you about your Panther Martin inline spinner. I was in your boat. I was with the Marshall Bassmasters. I think they're defunct at this point, but we went down to a quiet creek for a tournament, and I got paired with you in, in, your, in your boat. It was a great time. You ran a great program. I would love to get you on the show. Please contact me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> that um, yeah, she, uh, that's yeah. a memory. Yeah. And that's the thing, too, about this when you're a kid. It's just, it turns you into a bass geek. When, and, and I heard, I, I just dropped the video yesterday, which is, mm -hmm. by the way, guys, it's trending actually on Google right now, which is about Pennsylvania shutting down tournament fishing. Yeah, I saw that. ton yeah. of comments like, oh, that's good about getting rid of tournament fishing and stuff. And it's like, okay, but hear me out. That's also what got me hooked on fishing was that first blast off in a boat. And I got, I didn't have a boat at the time. I got, I got there. It was an old ranger. I remember that thing was clear like my first tournament. And the first time you hear that two stroke open up and you blast off and you, it, I was hooked. I was absolutely hooked. So there's something about those high school programs and getting kids hooked early on it. You make an angler for a lifetime. And you guys did a great job with all that. Yeah. They, uh, she did a great job with that. She mm -hmm. promoted, um, high school fishing. Um, I actually was sponsoring a team. I was working at a high school at the time and I sponsored the team and I talked to her about it and she had um, her show and I brought my team with me and we got a, a boot space and, and, you know, it was, you know, promoting, you know, high school fishing. And those guys now are in their late twenties, early thirties, and they're buying boats and they're taking their kids fishing. That's freaking um, awesome. And they're, they're, they're still with it. So uh, her program, um, yeah, she she had a tremendous following and a lot of people, you know, she grew that sport, high school fishing in Virginia. Um, I mean, she was she was the person to talk to. Um, oh, she, she that, was, you know, about that. What else? What else you got for us today? What have um, we not looked at? I got another, you know, change, another um, Lure Jensen um, bait. Uh, Lure Jensen made the speed trap. It's a Potomac River, uh, oh, yeah. you know, staple. Um, the guys that know them, uh, they're two sizes. This is the smaller size. Um, but when they made modifications, once again, they got bought out, got changed, and they have dimples and holding them up um, underneath in the single dimple or double dimples. That tells you that they're the older baits, and people like to fish the older type baits. So if you get to turn it so the belly's facing, see if you can... Too close. There you go. Little dimples. So people that are looking for speed traps are looking for the older speed traps. That's the first thing they do is they pick them up. They turn them over. If they have dimples, they will, you know, buy them. If they don't, pretty much they don't as a single. They don't pick them up. Yeah. <laughs> Tough to uh, get it to. There you are. Yeah. I like this, this, this little detail here. Which is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yeah. We, have, um, we, we do have a couple of questions. I want to make sure we get to all the questions sure. we have today, too. We got. We got Scott. Scott, does he buy old baits? I have a pretty nice collection of Baby One Minuses, Bagley's, Rapala's, and a lot of other stuff. He's, you're looking to sell them. Yeah, I, I do buy, <laughs> I do buy baits. I do resell baits. Um, so if you want to contact me, um, go to Facebook, go to Smitty's Tackle Box. Tackle Box is one word and you can, uh, you can hit me up there and, uh, contact me. Um, I'm part of a group or an organization. The NFLCC is the National Federation 
uh, Lure Collectors Club. Um, and as part of that club, um, basically, it's we, we're, we're being a member. When people ask you for value on your baits, you basically tell them this is what you have. This is what it's worth. Now, as I'm buying, I tell people, OK, so you get multiple prices. You get, you know, sometimes you get eBay prices, but people can put, you know, eighty nine ninety nine on it. And I kind of go, you know, why, where did they get that price from? And then I go to a flea market and it's three dollars. And then I go to, you know, a tackle show flea market uh, like what's coming up in Fredericksburg and it's six dollars. And then I go to, you know, another show and it's it's so there's different prices out there. So, you know, yard sale versus flea market versus fishing flea market versus you know, a tackle show, the prices vary on eBay. So you, I kind of give people an idea. Hey, they might be, you might find that bait for $89.99 on eBay, but I can find them for $3 all day long. So, you know, um, but I could, I'd be more than happy, you know, send me pictures. I can look through and tell you and give you an idea of what, you know, the value is. What is the hottest bait that you can get right now when it comes just overall in the market, not just this area, like the hottest wood bait that pe professionals are looking for. Wood bait? Yeah, or crankbait. Crankbait. Um, the Excalibur um, baits are the ones that you're talking about, the one knocker, and uh, I'll hold that up that way a little bit. The uh, Rayburn Red one knocker um, made by Excalibur, which was discontinued and bought out by Booyah or um, Bradco. And that bait will sell today, brand new and packaged for fifty dollars. I think I, I yeah, for yeah. Um, so yeah, and that honestly, and I didn't mean oh, sorry to cut you yeah. off. Is like that's one thing when people tell me like I got this secret bait. I get nervous because if you bet your whole day on I got this one crankbait for a hundred dollars, it works. Well, dude, if you skip that into a tree or you lose that, I mean, you're you're yeah. you're dead in the water. Yeah. So I've thrown that one. You can see, you know, that I've, I've used it. Yeah. Once or and, twice. And then I got another one. I, I bought this off of a gentleman that used to fish the Susquehanna and I've thrown this one as well. <laughs> and I, you can see how chewed up that is, but I've thrown both of those baits. I have not caught a fish on them. And people tell me how they, you know, Rayburn Red is the number one. And I can't, I can't catch fish on them. And I don't know why. And people say, I want to, you know, I keep on trying. Um, but what I learned was when Booyah bought Excalibur, <laughs> when Booyah bought Excalibur, Booyah, according to Dan Stoner, who worked for Pradco for 40 years, and I met him on the, the Rebel site, um, he said basically Booyah, one knocker, is the exact same bait. They didn't change a thing, and I'll let you take you, a look at it. What are your thoughts, so, though? Well, I've, I've weighed them. I've listened to them. I've thrown them. I haven't thrown that quite as much as I've thrown this one. The paint's just slightly different. But according to Dan, it's the exact same bait. So if you listen to the both of them, they weigh the exact same amount. And, you know, they're, they're the exact same bait, other than the paint being a little different. But I got guys that will, you know, and when I, I tell people that, they go, no, 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 they're different. They're different. I know, I know they're different. They, I don't catch fish on them. And, you know, you, you go back to what David Fritz used to do. He used to get a hundred crankbaits and he'd go out and test them all and he'd keep five, you know, that would, he would fish and catch fish on them. And I'm the same way. I mean, I've fished, you know, traps and, you know, been fishing, you know, tournaments for 30 years. And if I'm not catching a fish off this one, there's something off and they go, well, you don't throw rattle traps. So yeah, I do. And here's a hardcore drum oh, that wow. is no longer made. And that's one of my favorite um, baits to throw on the Potomac River. And I have a custom color that I get done that every fish will eat on the Potomac. I catch, you know, um, largemouth. I catch uh, snakeheads. I catch catfish. I catch perch. I catch striper on a, one custom colored bait that I, I like to throw. But the hardcore drum is um, the hardcore drum. Bait. So again, guys, it's called the hardcore drum. Yeah, they uh, Yozuri made them, and they had them at Bass Pro Shop, but they had them in the saltwater section because they called them a drum. And I, they just didn't market them or That's Bass so, Pro. They you know, yeah, it, who, didn't have who, them. Who where, called? Who who signed off on that? Like, 
but yeah, that's really yeah. cool and yeah. i don't know if you guys could hear it um it's such a unique yeah. sound yeah. it's like if it sounds like there's three pieces of sand in there almost it, it's not a lot is, next time we're gonna get another type of uh <laughs> river that's fine we'll figure that out later but uh yeah with the rattle traps yeah the the excalibur and rayburn red um you know and if you can't find one booyah i think they were selling first i think there's six to eight dollars now that's not and bad at, at, all. A, at a flea market most rattle traps go for a dollar two dollars mm. you know um and i find the the hardcore drum on occasion you know uh, occasionally find them uh, the excaliburs uh, the one knockers, um, you don't find those as often because people scoop them up. People know what they are. Um, even the not the non one knocker Excalibur, uh, in Rayburn Red sells for about $25 now. So those prices have gone up. And then we got, we got a bunch of questions flooding in right now. And then guys, if you could please like and share the stream, it just helps get it out. We are. Uh, fishing the DMV is a regional local fishing show. We only care about really this area of the greater DMV area. So anything you can do to help promote the show really helps. We got a bunch of questions we're going to get to. We're going to start at the bottom because I'm lazy. Travis Cyber, what's an upcoming company that makes crankbaits that you believe might be a game changing crankbait? Ooh. Um, I don't know if any, you know, a lot of them, and we'll get into this if we get to have the time. Um, a lot of the companies are remaking, you know, baits. Um, you see that in the industry. You know, you've seen it with the, the swim baits um, as well. You know, people have a, an idea. They come up with something original and then like the chatterbait and uh, like many different baits, although chatterbait was an original idea either. Um, that blade um, and that being, you know, in front of a bait was back. Uh, somebody told me uh, 1930s they had a blade bait with a similar type of blade out in front of it so things are recycled but when something gets hot all the companies go to to copy it mm -hmm. um so which is a know, shame because yeah. i do think it, it strangles creativity when you know and then guys you know this is what's nice about not being sponsored again thank you for my patrons it keeps me to be able to say this stuff like berkeley i mean like berkeley got into some trouble with some people in the industry or people were upset with them with some of their it almost seems like the copycatting a lot of things mm -hmm. And it's sad because you do see that where the chatterbait gets hot and then everyone rushes to copy it versus go innovate. Because what happens? All A lot of new techniques nowadays, it comes from Japan because they try new stuff and yeah. it comes over here. And then we just copy. And that's a shame because I don't know if it's a corporate thing or we just lost our ingenuity, but it seems like there's way more copycatting now than before. But I'm going to ask you, like back in the in the 90s, the early 2000s, were, were people always copycatting? Was that always a thing? Yeah, the 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 there was a lot of baits that came out. I think about uh, the ribworm, mm. uh, rubber worm came out with the rib ribworm, and what came out the pulse worm. You know, Berkeley came out with the pulse worm, pretty much the same bait, a little bit different. Same idea, those that flat with the ribs on the side, you know, um, there's an example of, you know, something that came out that was new and original. And then uh, look at uh, Yamamoto, uh, Gary Yamamoto yeah. with the Senko. Yeah. Um, you know, how many people, you know, copied that bait? One or two. So yeah, there's, there's a <laughs> few out there. So, yeah, there's always been copycats. Um, and that's, you know, in the industry. Um, and, you know, it's just part of. It, the, it, it really is. I mean, I guess that's business. just, it's human nature. We got yeah. so many questions. We're going to like get yeah. to all these questions here. Uh, we got, we got the captain in the house, captain, Mr. Steve Chaconis. Uh, Dave, David Smith is the authority on hard baits. Need a full show with him. Yeah. This is kind of a sampler. I do want to get him, uh, back to Jake somewhere where it's a little bit quieter. We can have a full in depth conversation. Uh, but I wanted to kind of give you guys just a sampling of what to expect yeah. in the future. Uh, let's see. Uh, Steve, too expensive to protect parents. And beaver baits copied all over. Yep. The the Cinco is not pat patented, uh, so knockoffs are exact. Ooh, that's a really good point. I didn't think about that being patented. And Steve, you're coming down to the show. Let me know. We got a couple more. Let me get to these questions here. We got Travis Cyber again. Um, please let me know, Travis, if I'm saying your last name correctly, because I'm 90% sure I'm not. Uh, what's everyone looking forward to at this expo? Or one thing slash person, company that you look forward to seeing? I'm going to always start off with my guests. What are your thoughts on that? Um, well, I uh, talking about uh, thanks, Steve, for the, the compliment. Um, but uh, he gets really into depth. I mean, if you have a conversation with him about tackle about and, uh, and Steve has been doing shows 
or come in and speaking to my club and he'll bring a bait or two and he goes into depth on things. Um, somebody who's very similar to him that's here is Lynn Bell at Fishing Pro Tech. And I'm going to be over there all day today and I'll be there tomorrow helping him out in his booth. But if you want to see somebody who is very, you know, gets into the details, I mean, the packaging, the baits, the, 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 the finer details, I don't really get into that. I, I mean, I know a broad range of baits and I know what I'm looking for and what people like to, you know, to, to use. Um, but if you're looking for guys that, you know, very, um, you know, know these baits in, in detail, those would be people to, you know, to see. Um, I come down here to look around to see what's new, what's coming, you know, what's coming out, the new things. Um, and then I hit up, you know, um, different booths that, you know, I know, um, what they have, what they're bringing, um, and to see what, you know, to see what they have. Um, swim baits, if you're looking for like Mike Buka has his booth here. Mike, I mean, oh if Mike, you look yeah. at some amazing, you know, swim baits, you know, you come down and you check his stuff out. Um, you know, just different vendors that are here, you know, I'm, I'm coming, you know. Yeah. And I think I have to, I'm going to tell you mine. Let me turn the camera. Back to you. Um, there we go. Um, I guess what I'm really looking forward to is seeing all the new local vendors. Um, I've gone to iCast. You know Berkeley. There's no shock when they come out with a new bait because they tell the whole world. So it's really cool when you stumble upon some local person and they're doing something different. Uh, classic example is last year, there's a vendor. We're going to talk to him again. You know, he takes and he makes handcrafted hard baits just as art to you put on your mantle. That's freaking neat. Um, and so little things like that, I really enjoy seeing what's i'm gonna i love kayaks and boats gonna take a look at those as well it's just it's eye candy um and then also who's actually speaking at the expo there's a lot of local talent and this is something that when i had less on the show a kevin van dam will always draw a crowd but when you get these local regional shows what also pulls is a captain steve chaconis it's the local guides because they know that area they know the river and so if you go to a, like a susquehanna fishing show yeah, Kevin Van Dam is going to always going to pull, but then that Susquehanna guy, he's going to do really well too. So I, I really think it's interesting when you see these local people, uh, these local companies and what they kind of bring to the table. And it's so important to actually support all these local companies and everything. You know, you don't want to just sell out to the McDonald's of the world, the Gillette's. You want to help support the people that keep the local industry alive and actually keep the culture alive as well. Yeah. Um, Dave, is there anything else that we can plug, add here? Uh, we will be going by the ProTech booth guys to, today. Don't worry about that. So we'll probably see the, this guy again to be hyping that up. You mean but, other, other companies here at the... Yeah. Um, I haven't really... I, when I got here, I was running a few minutes late. Um, so I didn't really get a chance yeah. to walk around yet. So as soon as I get done here, I'm going to sweet. You know, go walk around and check things out and see who's here. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. Is there um, anything you would like to but, plug? Well... Um, what you were saying about, you know, looking at the, the local vendors, uh, definitely the Fredericksburg flea market, uh, uh, David Limerick show, which has been going on for about 15 years now. Um, his show coming up next weekend on Saturday in Fredericksburg. Um, definitely to check that out. And then in two weeks, uh, February 3rd is Dale City at the, um, Hill and Dale fire department is the Dale City, uh, fishing, um, show bash show um we changed the name um we took that over about four years ago my club new horizon um and having a flea market and a flea market close together back-to-back -to -back weekends um kind of changed things to more of a bass tackle show um and we bring in we try to bring in those vendors those new vendors the guys that are you know making the baits in their you know in their garage or out in their shop um those type of vendors we tr we're trying to you know promote them and bring them in um to our show so right that's on. coming up um i don't know if Fredericksburg Fredericksburg is sold out but i know dale city is close to being sold out we'll have about 33 different spaces um or you know um so about 25 different vendors at that show um and that's coming up and that all goes to the youth foundation which is what we do in the club we put in we put on two uh kids derbies thomas knows about um, at Lake Fairfax in Reston, Virginia in June and July. And it's open for kids. We get 125 to 350 kids will come out and fish and get prizes and have a great day. Um, so that's what the Dale City Show is about, is raising money for the Youth Foundation. 
Awesome. So, Got that's it. my and promotion. Then, and then, uh, link, link in the episode description, everything. I will be at the Dale City show as well. I was going to do Fredericksburg this year, but I just, um, Next year, I'll be able to do that. Now, I'm, I'm trying to pace myself a little bit better here because I'm getting used to doing the the expo marathon here. So every year, I'm going to try to add one expo. So by that point, I'll be completely busy. Uh, Dave, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. And then we have, oh, my goodness, these questions. questions. All right. Let, so we're going to yeah, finish. I got a few other baits. Oh, here boy. Okay. Quick, so we're going to the, hmm? the custom. So Okay. We're going to do yeah. all the baits, oh. and then we're going to go through all the questions, and then we'll commercial. break to get to the boats and stuff because we got today is going to be a heck of a marathon for us, but we're up for it. All right. Steve, Steve, stop typing and just drive down here, please. Just stop <laughs> typing. Okay. Uh, we got, let's see, we got Ryan Dwalt. Ryan, yes, get him back to Jake's for a two hour interview ASAP. I will, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, we're working on that. We're trying to find a date. I think, uh, next weekend, we're going to get a date. Don't worry. We're going to do a full in depth interview. Uh, TDC Havoc. I'm excited to go to, I, I'm excited to go to it on Saturday since I used to go. To fishing expos all the time with my dad so it's going to be nice to go to one again yeah td come on by uh come say hi again uh i want to make sure my wife and or i are going to post our hours i want to make sure i'm here for a meet and greet and i'm not just live streaming 2000 hours uh the show's gotten big enough where people want to meet me and i felt bad last year where i was just i was trying to do too much live streaming so i'm blocking time off that i'm just going to be here chilling you can come by and say hi uh we got steve again we got lynn bell uh scores all mark i am wife help carly lynn bell scores lynn bell okay yeah scours yes. all mark is to find unique baits yeah. english is my second language apparently uh is da is davis tournament is davis tournament tackle still around i have no idea is davis Tur tournament tackle still around dave's tournament tackle is still around but unfortunately they're not at this show this gotcha. year okay so yeah we've we've lost a major vendor um at this show and uh dave had some original i mean you would get custom made uh, spinner baits and custom made you know jigs and custom and you could have ordered them right there and they would mm -hmm. make them for you right there but he also had a lot of other things and one of the things that he also had were the the zoom weck baits where am i going here perfect um there we go um and would in stock and that's the first time I ever saw one of those was at, at Dave's tournament tackle. And, uh, you know, it was a bait out of, um, you know, coming out of Georgia that you didn't find, you don't find in most tackle stores. Lynn Bell, Fishing Pro Tech, he, he has a lot of, uh, different and interesting baits that he picks up. He's, he gets into the Japan market and he, he purchases, well, he's mega bass. I mean, he's one of the first mega bass dealers in the United States. Wow. He's been since uh, 93, 1993. He's been selling mega bass, um, at fishing pro tech. So, um, he's been involved with the, you know, the Japan market, but yeah, he, he gets custom orders. Here's another example of something that he did back in the day. Um, here's a bandit that he, go ahead and hold that up, that Lynn had custom made from bandit. They wanted, he wanted a clear one, but they wouldn't do it clear because they didn't want people just to paint them. So he asked him to do a splatter back. Um, and so he made a run of That's special run so of those that cool. he used to sell here at the show. And now people are bringing them back to him. This is one somebody, one of his clients brought back to him and then I got it from him. That's so, so cool. Ah. You know, you get, you get some custom, you know, custom zoom runs that he does. Um, and he does, you know, a lot of different baits. So. Lynn Bell, this is Becky again. Lynn Bell Protech is a great, is great as well for vintage baits. Used to have Japanese baits. So beautiful. Again, we're going to be going by there today as well. Um, to wrap this up because, um, sorry on time, but we're going to have, well, I want to get the live stream set up before there's a flood of people coming in, but I want to go through this last box here real quick. So I'm going to turn my camera off so we can take a look at this. Well, um, I went down to the Pigeon Ford show and got the opportunity to meet, um, a gentleman by the name of uh, Steve Blazer. And Steve was known for making baits. Um, and this one, hold that close up to the- About 12 inches um, away. That is a, uh, an original Steve Blazer tap. It's uh, over 30 years old. Um, he made, he kept about 200 blanks before when he sold the, the rights to that bait to Ed Chambers at Zoom. And he kept 200 of them. Wow. And then recently he came back out and he, he didn't realize that 
people were selling his baits online for two hundred, two hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, wow. um, it, they're proven tournament winners. That's um, insane. And so he uh, came back out and he started making them. And I, I contacted him. I said, "Make one in your favorite color," and that's what he made for me. So I got to talk with him uh, two weeks ago and chit chat with him. And it's just amazing the amount of information that he has. But most people, if you see this bait, a tap style bait, it is not more than likely it's not a Steve Blazer original, but there are some out there and they do have some value. And this is the tap and Ed Chambers named it a tap. It wasn't called a tap um, then. It was a, it was, the company's name was Tennessee Tuffy, hmm. but he made three different style baits. He had a pot belly and then he had another bait that actually Zoom not Zoom, um, Bagley made a copy of, um, and also Pose, the RC3, is a duplicate of that bait. Um, so you're going to see, you know, in, you know, well, you're, you're talking about people knocking off other, yeah. you know, or coming up with. So the Pose, the RC3, is a duplicate of one of Steve Blazer's original baits. That's so cool. Um, so I got to meet him, and he actually he signed that for me. And it's part of my collection. Um, and then here's another one, Rob Cochran at Jawjacker. So I'll let you put that up there. Jawjacker made that version. That was one of his baits that he made. And then um, you might want to take a look at this one. Ooh. And then take a look at that one and see if they are similar. And you'll notice that, yes, by the way, they are. So basically, that's crazy. The uh, DT6, the DT baits came from Rob Cochran's huh. SS. That's freaking so, awesome. Um, you know, you'll see that. Um, then I got a whole mix of other baits, and you'll find, um, for example, the Carolina Killers um, are very popular flat sided bait. These are all handmade uh, baits that i have and i sell some i get some i find them in tackle boxes and and online occasionally and get lucky and pick up one or two and being in the business i had to learn a lot more about them and there are so many of them i've been told there's well over 330 custom makers known to exist um i have 125 um identified but then i have a bunch more that need to be identified um in my collection so you saw that one. So then you come down here and you get a, uh, uh, gulp. Every, a lot of people know about gulps. Uh, that's a harder gulp. That's the same style, same, same bait. Um, then, um, you see how people have duplicated the, these baits. This is a bandit, North Carolina bandit. It's not the bandit from Mississippi. There you go. But it's the same style bait. And like you'll that see that people have, you know, ah, and then, uh, one more bait, one more one bait, more, <laughs> well, the one more, yeah, the yep. one that, uh, people copy. This is not a big O, but it is a Fred Young. It's called a Mr. Fred and it's labeled underneath, but the big O being copied, I don't know by how many companies have a, you know, shallow diving fat, uh, crankbait. Um, one that's close to it is a, uh, would be a Mike E-Step. Mike and worked with Fred Young. Um, that's a E-Step. And uh, that bait today sells for $125 to $150. That's and there's huge collections of them. Uh, the Fred Young, same thing. Um, a brand, a new Big O is going to go $250 to $400 Jeez. in the collector world. Um, so people, some people don't realize what they have um, in their collection. And uh, for example, I went to one of the shows and go ahead and show that. Um, I went to a collector show and I was going around and I found that jerk bait and the gentleman was selling some other baits and he had like $30 on these other baits that were only, you know, they were unknown. They weren't, you know, uh, known baits and he wanted 30 a piece, but he wanted 10 for that one. So I paid it, you know, the $10. That's an $80 we. Uh, Wes England, who unfortunately passed away last year, so all the prices of his baits. Mm. We're losing a lot of builders. A lot of these guys, Mike Eastep passed away recently. Um, Wes England passed away. Um, another um, builder just passed away. Um, AC Shiner 
the builder for AC Shiner uh, out of Ohio passed away recently. So a lot of these guys that were building baits in the 70s and 80s, you know, these wood baits that are, you know, pretty well known. Ed, Ed Chambers passed away a few years ago and his prices of his baits have gone Jumped up tremendously. Uh, yeah, look at a foiled mutt today, 80 to 120 dollars, you know, for a foiled mutt that Ed Chambers made. That's so, insane. Yeah, you know, prices have just skyrocketed. Yeah. So I mean, on these baits. Thank thank you again so much for coming oh, on. Yeah, um this this is our game plan is guys, we're gonna have him on for a full in-depth two to three hour. Maybe we'll go longer at Jake's at some point. Uh once we get through the craziness here. This was a sampler. Please go support uh, New Horizon and all they do. Also, Dale City Show is coming up soon as well. Uh, we're going to go to a brief intermission. I'm going to try to start the booth to booth thing by 9.15, 9.30. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep this live stream up. That way people can find it again. Because um, I didn't have time to really make a new one. I don't, wanna, I don't want people to get lost. So I'm going to log off here for a second. Uh, stay tuned. 10 to 15 minute break. And then we're going to be back. Dave, thank you so much. Hey, I appreciate it. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.